Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be returning to Mars and talking about the origin of its moons, Phobos and Deimos. This is actually based on completely new research and a new simulation coming out of Southwest Research Institute, suggesting that the origin of its moons might have been different from what we thought. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So when it comes to creation of moons, uh, we usually think there is two major possible ways, or I guess three. The first way is if the moons are actually born with the planet, um, as the planet accretes from a disk, the moons um, basically coalesce from this disk and are created at the same time as the actual planet. We think that for uh, planets like Jupiter and Saturn, uh, the larger moons like Io, Europa, Ganymede, um, and Callisto may have actually been created at the same time as Jupiter. So in other words, they, they were created from the accretion disk of the planet. The second way we think for moons to be around a planet are also here in the Jupiter system, and that's the smaller moons that orbit around Jupiter. And so this is the capture theory. For the longest time, we thought that this is how Mars got its uh, moons as well. And the, the way capture works is, well, it's really pretty simple. And an object passes by the planet. In this case, it would be an asteroid passing very close to um, a planet. And uh, due to its velocity not being too big or too small, it actually gets captured by the planet. So let's just see if we can maybe capture some of these asteroids I just launched. They're going to be passing by... Uh, or entering Jupiter's uh, system, and I actually don't even see them anymore. And um, at some point, they may either collide with Jupiter, or they might uh, be attracted to it and get captured by it, or they might just fly away. Now, I don't exactly know what happened to those objects I just launched. Maybe I have to be a little bit closer, and let's try this again. So here is that object. So it might get captured, it might collide, or it might escape. And in this case, it actually escaped the system, I believe, and is now headed some other direction. Uh, but uh, if you launch millions of these, at some point you'll have at least one or two captures. So a lot of the uh, irregular asteroids of Jupiter and Saturn most likely have this origin. And then there is a third type of the creation of the moon, or the third theory, and this is how um, Earth got its moon. In other words, we believe that a long time ago, a very, very large object well, possibly an object about the size of uh, Mercury or Mars, collided with our planet, and this collision generated a very large cloud of dust that then resulted in a, in a ring around the planet that then resulted in the moon of our planet. It was actually a lot closer before, then it moved away. Yeah, we may have even had several moons, some of them may have actually collided back to the planet Earth. So, um, which of the theories applies to Mars? Well, the new research indicates that it's actually the last one, the collision theory. And today I actually wanted to show you what the scientists from Southwest Research Institute discovered. First of all, they ran simulations using a supercomputer that was responsible for simulating the Earth-Moon collision, um, or creation that is, and they discovered that you can also generate these types of moons on Mars in the same way. And the simulations that you see on the screen right now kind of show you how uh, they were able to create similar um, moons. And that's just one of the possibilities. So in other words, if you receive or if you uh, create a collision on Mars, there is a chance that it might result in a creation of the moon similar to uh, how Earth got its moon. Now, I don't know if anything will happen here, but yeah, it looks like we didn't create anything new here. Uh, but I guess if you run this thousands and millions of times, you will end up with these two moons at some point. So that's uh, reason number one. Reason number two why they think that this is how Mars got its moons and not that they were captured is really when you look at their orbits. First of all, they're very circular, and circular orbits often indicate that the object was created from an accretion disk. It's possible that they may have circularized their orbit over billions of years, but because Martian uh, gravity is not very strong, 
they would still have a slightly more eccentric orbit than you see here. Here they are almost perfectly circular. As a matter of fact, if you look at their parameters, going into the motion here, uh, their eccentricity for both of these moons is, uh, I think I may have missed it, uh, the eccentricity is 2% and Deimos seems to have close to 0%. In other words, it's extremely circular. Um, and the main reason why we think that, or they think at least, uh, that uh, these two moons were born from a collision is because of where they're located. If you look at how Mars is rotating and how these moons orbit around Mars, they're almost entirely aligned with its axis of rotation. In other words, they're basically orbiting around the equator. For an object to be captured in such a way where it actually starts orbiting around the equator is relatively difficult. It's actually a very low chance. On top of that, for two objects to have this orbit is even more unlikely. And so for these two moons to have this type of an orbit and to actually have such circular orbit without a collision theory is just not very likely. It's more likely that this was a collision. Okay, well, assuming that this was a collision, what could have collided with Mars? And the scientists behind this paper actually believe that it was most likely something very similar to either uh, Vesta or Ceres, which are actually two objects that we've uh, studied in quite a lot of detail and have actually orbited around in uh, with one of the uh, probes called Dawn Probe. Uh, and uh, we believe that there were more such objects in the asteroid belt. These two objects are actually in the asteroid belt, relatively close to Mars. And so if one of them actually collided with Mars, which is uh, what the scientists now believe, they could have actually created um, a dust cloud around Mars that would then result in the creation of uh, the accretion disk, that would then result in the creation of moons. So let's see if any of these fragments actually do create a moon. It's quite possible, but maybe not. Mm, looks like they all kind of return back to Mars. Uh, but if I do this a few times, it's very likely that I'll end up with something that may, may create the uh, moon similar to Phobos. So maybe I just have to aim at a slightly different spot here, so that the actual fragments actually start orbiting around Mars with more um, circularization. Now, it doesn't really work as simple as in this simulation. As a matter of fact, uh, a collision of this uh, matter would produce a very large dust cloud around Mars and this dust cloud would then result in essentially a ring around Mars uh, which might end up coalescing into the moons that we see here. And this suggests two things. One is that at some point Mars actually had a relatively large ring around it similar to Saturn and two is that uh, it may have actually had other moons and other objects that coalesced and then escaped the Martian uh, orbit. Uh, we, we think something similar may have happened around Earth, of course, but in case of Mars, it ended up creating these two moons that did stay here for a few billion years. And Deimos is, ac is actually still moving away from Mars and at some point will most likely escape Martian orbit, although not for the next few billion years. H however, Phobos is slowly falling onto the surface of Mars and at some point will basically crash and return back like the other um, moons, smaller moons, or maybe even larger moons that may have been here before Phobos and Deimos. And lastly, this mo might also suggest that at some point, uh, billions of years ago, Mars may have had more moons than two. There may have been a lot more moons that either escaped or crashed. So this research is pretty interesting, but the only way we can actually finalize and conclude whether this is true or not is by actually landing on Deimos and Phobos and studying the actual um, rocks and uh, the actual composition of rocks in more detail and then comparing them to Mars. If these rocks are similar to Mars, then there is almost no doubt that this is how it happened. If, however, these rocks are more similar to the asteroid belt, then they were probably captured. And uh, I believe China was the only country that was actually planning to land on Phobos and Deimos anytime soon. So maybe they will be the one discovering this, this in the next few decades or so. Other than that, for now it's just a theory. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about Mars, Phobos and Deimos. And now you know that Mars used to be a lot different from what it looks like today. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.